Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Autodesk's Digital Builder Podcast, a show that inspires construction professionals to innovate and use technology to improve how they build our world. I'm Eric Thomas, and I've been working in construction for nearly a decade. And now I have the privilege to sit down with industry trailblazers to hear how they're solving construction's biggest challenges and redefining the future of the built environment. All right, welcome back to Autodesk Digital Builder Podcast. I am your host, Eric Thomas. We are live at Autodesk University. It is day one. The room is electric. I can vouch for that because there are at least a dozen, if not hundreds of people standing all around me, staring at me for some unknown reason, but we are having fun and I'm fired up. I am joined today by Jenna Pellegrino, the Senior Manager of Customer Experience and Strategy from Construction, and Mallory Adiago, Director of Customer Success, also with the construction team. So how are you both doing today? Doing awesome. Fired up? So excited to be here and be back in Vegas. I almost believe you. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, It's all good. It's it's so much fun to be back at AU and, you know, talking to customers and having such a good experience and just the energy. I wish we could do this every every three months, but I think we'd all die because of the prep that is required to get here. But either way, I am very happy to be here. And, uh, you know, this episode is coming out during the event. So we're going to talk a whole lot about what both of you are seeing, talking to customers, enjoying the keynotes, and just kind of getting the buzz of the experience overall. So, Jenna, first question I'm going to throw to you. I know, as I just mentioned, day one of the event, the day's almost over and a lot's happened. What's the most exciting that you've, thing you've seen or heard today? I have to say it, but Autodesk AI. I feel like right now AI is everywhere. I've been hearing about it on the expo floor and it was actually a really big topic at our BIM meetup that we had this morning where firms were talking about how they started to not only just be thinking about it, but kind of dabbling about it and thinking about really how could this transform their business? How could they start putting this to use? Um, We see that there's so much opportunity for helping with that complex decision making. So for me, it was really refreshing to see how AI is something that we're not really fearing anymore, but we see how it can open up doors for us. And we're kind of taking that next step, next step forward. I, I love that focus too, because like we've been doing things with AI at Autodesk for a while now. So it's not a brand new conversation, but just that, that bigger vision that we finally get to realize and have a conversation about in such a meaningful way is incredibly exciting. And I think every time we get to bring this up and talk about it, we get to push away some of those anxiety myths of, you know, the, you know, Terminators are coming or whatever silly (laughs) nonsense, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I appreciate you a whole bunch, but sorry, I don't agree with your AI narrative. And I don't think anybody sitting here at this table does either. So (laughs) Mallory, how about you? What's got you the most fired up today as far as uh, what you've seen from the, the first day of the expo? I got really excited about the flow keynote and actually seeing the parallels that there are between the process of uh, media and entertainment and construction. And this is a little bit specific, but when they were talking about the the AI scheduling that they could do in uh, in flow, um, I, I got really excited about thinking how we could bring that technology into construction and start thinking about how we could use AI to model out what changes would cause to a construction schedule. Um, so just seeing the different the advances in the different technologies that Autodesk is developing and how we can bring those into construction was super exciting. You know, you've touched on one of my favorite things about Autodesk University, and it's that incredible convergence of all the industries. Where else on earth do you get to hang out with 11,000 of your friends who come from architecture, construction, manufacturing, media and entertainment? And that incredibly interesting and unique overlap between all of those skills and talents and backgrounds and experience It's such a cool moment that I'm really thankful for. And I I feel like we can learn a lot from our friends across the fence, even if they're not tied directly to our typical workflow. So, you know, it's it's a great opportunity. And obviously everybody here staring at us right now is at Autodesk University. But if you haven't had the opportunity to come, you absolutely should, because there's there's just so much to learn. And it's easy to go home and say, I'm fired up about new technology and everything else. So I, I appreciate that. And, you know, Mallory, I've got another question for you. I know you've connected with a a number of customers here at AU this year, and you're going to talk to a whole bunch more from what I understand for the next couple of days. Can you tell me a bit more about these conversations and, you know, what are you hearing from folks? What are they excited about? What are they concerned about? You know, what's, uh, what's the buzz about today? Yeah, a lot of what I've been hearing about is really around how excited they are about how open our platform is and what they're able to do with 
the data that they're able to extract out of our platform. Um, so this is something that's new to a lot of construction technology uh, construction companies that they are able to use our tools, take the data out of our tools, and do all kinds of really cool things with that data uh, in. Uh, their own kind of homegrown systems in other systems and transport that data into other parts of their organization that hasn't had access to it in the past. And so just knowing that we are building these open platforms that they're able to own their data and share it in really cool ways, um, that is a trend that I keep hearing over and over in conversations. You're speaking directly in my heart right now because, you know, we managed the, the harnessing the data advantage um, with FMI, the research part, a couple of years ago. And we're, we're turning that corner in that, in that data conversation. And I think construction companies are risk managers and construction companies are technology companies more often than not now. And they have so many interesting things to manage, but the, the core component is the data. And the better we can be about intentionally managing it and capturing it, as all of these open platforms, as you just alluded to, start to come together, everybody's in such a great position. And it's the lever that you get to pull because you, you own it, as you just astutely pointed out. You don't own your supply chain. You don't own material pricing. But you can make an impact if you look inward and start managing your processes better. There's, there's so much you can build on. But Jenna, any, uh, anything else coming from your perspective? I know you're also talking to a number of customers. Are they mirroring the uh, sentiments from what Mallory's heard? Or you know, what's, uh, what's the buzz in your cohorts? <laughs> absolutely mirroring it. And another thing that's been coming up, especially from the expo floor and also in the meetups that we had, was there is so much excitement around having like-minded individuals coming together at AU, which I think you were starting to touch on here as well. But we saw this again in spaces like meetups where you're able to walk into that room and kind of find your person. How often does that happen where you can find people in groups that are talking about their journey, their experience with technology adoption, where they're at, and we've, even where they're headed. So I think it's really exciting to have these types of connections, especially coming from the industry where I know how valuable that can be to kind of push boundaries and get over hurdles. Um, so I think it's exciting to see those conversations are starting here, but I know some of them, and it's already happening, where we want to continue those conversations outside of AU, and that's really special. And, and you make such a great point too, and like I think about it from the lens of, say a mid-market contractor or somewhere in the Midwest who they might have a very small VDC team. They might be the only VDC person and they don't have that sounding board to come in and say, what else are you trying? What else can we do? And I feel like before the VDC team was kind of the, you're, you're the IT group of the organization and you're the only ones doing interesting things with tech, but they get to come here. They get to have that conversation with their peers and bring that back to their organization. And I think this, this exciting moment that we're having right now with the construction industry is it's not just the big companies that get to play in these, in these fields with all of the different tools and all of the different processes and you know, the data strategies that we're considering. And so it's, it's everybody's game. And I, I really, I just, I wish we could scream it from the rooftops. I'll turn the PA up a little bit more and just you know, let everybody know there's, there's a lot to be done. And I think that narrative's changing. So that's really cool. I appreciate that context. And, and Jenna, also, I know your team is really deeply connected to our community booth. And there's a program that I've heard a lot about and I'm excited to hear more about called The Voice of the Customer. So could you tell me a bit more about that program and what you're hearing from the folks that are you know, participating in the community booth and part of your VSC program? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. The community booth is a space on the expo floor where we're sharing on, but also inviting all of the firms to come in. And we're talking about the big room, which is our online community space. We also have e-learning, which is learning for product, literally at your fingertips. And then as you mentioned, our voice of the customer team is there. And we're also showing up, as I mentioned, in the meetups, in research sessions, and really anywhere we can get out and talk to everybody. And all of these different touch points and conversations that we're having are absolutely foundational to voice of the customer. So what voice of the customer is all about for Autodesk is really listening and actioning on feedback. We want to understand what that experience is like that we've set up for you so we can understand what's working for firms, uh, what we can do better, and really how we can move forward together. Um, I like to think about this as understanding where construction firms and how they're thinking, what they're doing, um, because of those experiences and interactions that we have with us. So I know voice of the customer can sound a little bit abstract in some way, but it's really all about providing that space and that avenue for feedback and ensuring that we action on it. It makes a lot of sense. And I think it, 
that really emphasizes the the partner conversation that we have. Like, if you're, I, I've I've interacted with so many tools, whether it's in construction or not. I'm just a you know a technology nerd, and it's always very clear when a company is trying to solve a problem that the customer doesn't necessarily have. And that creates a very weird misalignment between what your team is doing and the people who are actually going to use that tool. And so having that feedback loop is so incredibly important. And it's encouraging to hear that, you know, your team's building very deliberate programs to achieve that. Look, Mallory, I know you're also tied into this feedback loop as well. So yes. I'd be really interested to hear, you know, a bit more about what you're doing with that information that you're gathering from these discussions. Like, I, I think it's important to emphasize this isn't just going into a, you know, a Excel form to die and then, you know, okay, thank you for right. telling me that. Like, where does it really hit home? I'd right. like to know more. Yeah, so my team is comprised of customer success managers and implementation consultants. So we are helping our customers to deploy and adopt our technologies. And so our team is working day in and day out with our customers, really getting in depth in what their struggles are day to day out on the field, in, in the office. Um, and we work super closely with Jenna's team to gather those insights from our customers, really understand their business problems, what they're trying to achieve, and how our technology helps them to do that, and where maybe it's not quite there yet. Um, and gather all of that information, provide it to VOC, and then also as a kind of whole team um, with VOC, we expose that to the rest of the organization. So we make sure that every part of Autodesk understands exactly what the point of view is of our customers from these really intense kind of day in, day out interactions that we're having with them. So it's really fun to be here at AU. My whole team is here. We're having over 120 meetings with customers this week. Wow. And not even including just the demos that we're doing on the on the floor. Um, so we're getting that really juicy in-depth feedback from our customers. We're putting that into the VOC process and then that gets access into our R&D team so that they are reviewing all of that feedback in a data backed way so that they can make decisions on our product roadmap based off of uh, what our customers are needing to be successful. Um, and we're making sure our marketing team is hearing that, that our sales team is hearing that, and, and really um, being the advocates for our customer back into the rest of Autodesk. It really comes full circle, and I, I think it, it maps back to a message we talk about with our customers in that we're trying not to make these gut decisions now. We want to be able to augment those decisions with informed data and information. And so, yes. you know, it goes both ways. And it also makes me think back to a recent interview that I did with John Fish, the CEO of Suffolk Construction, who yeah. is very prolific if you're not familiar with him. Yes. And he said during that conversation that these challenges construction is facing, these are not challenges for one company to solve. And I think that that really maps back to what your teams are doing and that you're really going to the, the, the core of the challenges and hearing from everybody and not just one company. And I think that really just, it makes such a difference because Autodesk isn't gonna be the only one that solves that problem. It's not gonna be right. the suffix of the world, even though John Fish is absolutely brilliant, it's not going to be one single contractor. And so there's so much work to do. And I think just continuing the narrative in places like Autodesk University, Maybe, I don't know, you know, it just, it continues to, to feel good. And I, I'm, I'm encouraged by it and very, very appreciative. So say somebody out there is hearing this, whether they're in the audience hanging out with us today or, you know, back home listening and, you know, wishing they were here and, you know, planning to come next year. Jenna, I'd be curious, how can folks get involved? How can they be part of some of these programs that you're talking about? Well, there's so many different ways to get involved. Um, First of all, this is such a gift to have customer feedback and it doesn't go into a black hole as Mallory's talking about and we really value it and we encourage that engagement. So a couple of avenues here. First of all, of course your account teams, that's such a good, you know, into working with Autodesk even more and we, we value that. Um, some, uh, some other ones here are we have our customer experience program. So things like the community space that I mentioned in the big room. Um, another fun one was we actually have some in-app. So when you're in product, we have some pop-ups that come up. And we hear you. If you're sharing your feedback and your sentiment and how you're feeling about Autodesk, it's, it's not going nowhere. We're reading it and we're, we're sending it back to teams and we're wanting to make sure we're actioning on it. So that's another great way to engage. Um, 
And then other other account teams that we have as well audit us, like if you're talking to support to help you work through something, if you're getting training, if you're even doing our e-learning and you're, you're sharing your feedback there, all of these different digital and in-person engagements matter so much to us. So there are many different options. Another fun one that is coming out soon is ACC forums. So you'll be able to go in there and have product conversations where maybe you have a wish list of something you want to share and hear if others are interested or connect more with our product team. That's coming really soon and we're really excited about it. Yeah, it sounds like there's such a, an impactful, you know, very deliberate feedback loop that you're creating. And, and I'm encouraged to hear that, you know, that doesn't just go into a black hole. So thank you for <laughs> kind of giving that baseline. Also, if you're out there, you know, you can be on Digital Builder potentially if you've got an interesting story. So, you know, bother me on LinkedIn and maybe we'll figure that one out. But, you know, Mallory, anything else that, uh, you know, people can think about as far as getting involved or being tied to some of your programs? Yeah. So when my team gets involved, it's because an account has a customer success manager or an implementation consultant. So those are the actual people helping our customers day in and day out that are also there to take that feedback and, and get you plugged into these other programs that are going on as well. We have different um, community uh, events like Jenna was talking about here at AU. I'm just about to run off to um, a couple of different customer uh, get togethers that came out of the customer experience team and um, they were formulated through the customer experience team. That program ended, but the customers continued to get together on their own um, after the formalized program had ended just because they found so much value in the community building. Like you were mentioning before, uh, a lot of these customers don't have large teams so that they're able to share their experiences and learn from each other. Um, so. Those programs are continuing, and, and I'm running off to a dinner pretty quickly here to attend that and, and hear directly. That's Mallory from asked me to wrap this one yeah. up. <laughs> I'm hungry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I, I'm so thankful to hear that that, that feedback loop is there. And I just think there's so much opportunity to, to learn from everybody. And I think that's, that's one of my favorite things about construction is obviously folks aren't showing their super deep competitive insights, but it's an industry that's very open to sharing and, and building that community. And, you know, AU is just one of those channels to do it, but also all of these programs that you're talking about right now, these are, these are evergreen, these continue on. And so, you know, even if you didn't make it to Autodesk University this year, I think there's an opportunity to, you know, jump in and check things out. And so if you've got any links to anything, make sure you send them to me in the next couple of days, we can add them to the show notes so folks can, you know, make sure they can check all of these things out. But I've got two more questions for each of you, super uh, you know, exciting ones. And I'm interested, first off, Mallory, what are your favorite industry trends right now? What are you seeing out there in the industry that excites you? And what do you predict for the next you know, five to 10 years? Yeah, I was fortunate enough recently to moderate a panel on sustainability and construction at AGC in Palm Springs. And it was really inspiring to hear from some of the panelists about what is coming down the pipe as far as sustainability it uh, goes in construction. And so, so I am just kind of thinking through what those trends were that I was hearing. And there's a lot coming down from a, a regulatory standpoint in uh, what the government is requiring from our construction customers to um, make sure that we're making the best decisions for our environment. And some of the really interesting things that got brought up in the panel were basic things like when materials are brought to site, are they wrapped in a material that is, is, can be recycled? Is it wrapped in a, a blanket that can be reused? Or what type of uh, construction product is being used? Is it a material that is sustainable? Is it a material that we saw earlier in the keynote is made out of mushrooms that can be eventually composted? Um, so I think there's a lot more we can do with sustainability and making the earth a, um, a, a healthier place for everybody. So I'm really excited to see what the developments are in sustainability. I, I love that. And I feel like we're starting to pivot right now where we're having more impactful and meaningful conversations. I, I feel like in years past, sometimes it was hard to, you know, hit the nail on the head with our sustainability goals. And some of it was a little performative. And right now, obviously, it's incredibly important, both as for Autodesk as a business, but you know, just the planet and you know, government requirements. So I appreciate you sharing that. I think 
that's going to continue to be more and more impactful. And even you know, some of the tools we're using, I think, are going to start streamlining and reducing waste and all the other fun stuff that yeah. I talk about on the show all the time. So I won't go too deep into it today. <laughs> Jenna, how about you? What, uh, what trends are you fired up about right now? And what do you see coming in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, I'm fascinated by and so interested to see where we go with industrialized construction and how we can start to take those manufacturing techniques into the design process. I think it's a complicated one and there's so much potential to do more here. Um, it's, it's one of these topics that had come up at one of our executive councils and it was amazing to hear from our European friends what they're doing and how they're exploring this area. And I think there's a lot of untapped potential here that, that is on our radars um, and something that I know Autodesk is really interested in as well. So. I have my eyes on it. I'm very intrigued and excited to see where we go. I think that's a great plug for Autodesk University, too, because you can come learn from your manufacturing friends because they're just hanging out yes. right over there. So we'll, we'll continue this convergence. It's really exciting. So one final question for both of you. It's a very serious one. I'm okay. looking forward to both of your answers. Mallory, what is one tool that you will use on every project, no matter what project you're working on? Well, I will... Maybe I don't use this on every project, but a lot of what I do involves data, um, sharing customer data, both back towards a customer or internally. And we've recently implemented a tool called Matic. And what Matic does is it connects to our internal database um, and it automatically populates PowerPoint templates with data. So instead of having to go into Looker or go into Snowflake and comb through a bunch of data, I can just hit a button and it just populates a template for me and saves me hours of time. So Matic is a tool that I now cannot live without. I like it. Anything you can automate and save time seems like a big yeah, win to exactly. me. So solid answer. Jenna, what do you got? What's your favorite tool? I have to say it, but ChatGPT. All right. <laughs> um, it's, it's topical right now. How can I not? I mean, from planning my kids' birthday parties and sending me the direct links to things that I need to helping to help make decisions. There's so much potential there, and it's so fun to see the different ways that I can apply it from the birthday parties to cooking to whatever it may be. So I've had a lot of fun playing around with that and have to keep going on the AI topic, so. <laughs> I like it. It's another example that our you know, AI overlords aren't you know, so scary as some might imply. So I yeah. appreciate that. And you know, thank you both for joining me today on Digital Builder. We are coming to you once again, live from Autodesk University, and uh, we are fired up. It's early in the day, but we had a full day to enjoy the festivities. And of course, I was uh, tied to the podcast booth the majority of the day yesterday. But I am excited that I am to be joined today by Ross Wagner, Manager of Technical Solutions from uh, AEC with Autodesk, and Justin Lipsy, a Technical Solutions Executive also from Autodesk. So gentlemen, how are you doing today? You feeling fired up? The keynote's gonna happen here in a little bit. You know, there's a bunch of cool stuff happening. How you doing? Doing fantastic. I mean, the energy in here is just electric. This whole week has me just pumped. There's tons of innovators, there's business leaders, all willing and wanting to transform their businesses and, and just keep emerging tech uh, at, at, at top of mind for their, their companies. So it's it's, it's, it's amazing. crazy. I mean, there's over 11,000 people at Autodesk University this year. I think it's like 11,700 or something crazy yeah. like that. And we're just in such a, a great position to you know learn from folks and, you know, see what they're doing. Everybody's doing crazy, innovative things. And, you know, this tech cycle just keeps kind of circling. Justin, how you doing? How are you feeling today? Pretty good. I'm excited to be back here at Vegas. Um, it's my second AU, second time in Vegas. And I've wanted to be on the podcast since 2020, so I'll dream filled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. It always makes me happy to meet somebody who's been listening to the show for a while. We've, uh, you know, we've had the privilege of growing uh, considerably in the last few years. And, you know, Autodesk University is my Super Bowl, essentially. So I'm, I'm stoked to be here, and I'm glad you're uh, you're joining us. But Justin, uh, my first question today is actually for uh, for you. And before we get too deep into the excitement, I want to hear a little bit more about how both of you met because it's connected to AU. And I think that's really cool. And, you know, just how that ended up leading to both of you sitting in front of me and, you know, being on Digital Builder today. Yeah, my first AU was four years ago, 2019 in Vegas, and it was unforgettable. I, I met Ross. Uh, but where the memories start for me is Allison Scott was on stage at the general session uh, day one, and she was talking about her 
uh, transition from the construction industry to construction technology and ultimately Autodesk. And then also she was speaking really passionately about ACC, Autodesk Construction Cloud, the vision and how it's impacting the industry today. And I was sitting there thinking like, I, I resonate with all of this and I wanna be a part of this industry transformation. Uh, so later that day, uh, Ross had a class with, with Cliff Cole who I know is going to be on the podcast this week as well. Yeah, Cliff was um, uh, our first guest ever, actually. He's awesome. Yeah, exactly. I'm excited to Legend. see him. Legend. Yeah. yeah, Cliff <laughs> is amazing. Uh, so I right after the class, it was about field technology adoption. And Cliff said something in there that I, I take to heart every day, actually. Um, find out what works and then iterate, iterate, iterate. So I use that at my old role. I use it here today at Autodesk. But right after the class, I beeline over to Ross and I go, hey, what do you do? and how can I do that? I mean, we set up time to talk later. Um, and basically that day marks the, my career pivot to construction technology and my career here at, at Autodesk. I love it. And you know, Ross is a hell of a speaker. I've had the pleasure of working with him for about six years now. So I, I'm glad you, you know, were able to bring him into the fold and now you're you know, working side by side here at Autodesk. And you know, what you said five years ago, six years ago, uh, I can't remember. Oh, good. <laughs> My brain is melting. I've been doing, uh, doing a lot of podcasts this week. Uh, but since 2019, you know, that's a big yeah. change. And uh, it's cool that you've been able to join the team and you know, be part of the ride. But yeah, I think like, you know, just looking back on that day, it was, I remember specifically, Justin was so proactive on like learning what we do in technical solutions. And um, he was really adamant about like learning how we help out customers. And, you know, he was very forward thinking within his own company. And I just, you know, I, I'll, remember, I'll always remember that. And so whenever new roles came up on the team and he, he reached out, I was like, oh, we got, we got to hire Justin. Nice. He's the man. He planted that seed and yeah. you know, here we are. So I, I'm right. glad that it all kind of came full circle. It's a, it's a great example of just, you know, one of the small things that happen at AE, but, you know, have a big impact for the folks that are attending. And totally. I, I appreciate you sharing that story. So, of course, I mentioned just a minute ago, it is the beginning of day two of this event, but I feel like so many things have happened with our keynotes yesterday. So, uh, Ross, can you tell me a little bit more about the exciting things things you're hearing or you've been a part about this week. So like, what are you fired up about? You know what? I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time on AI because I know you've talked a lot this week about <laughs> AI and that's obviously the big theme. And there's um, a reason for that. Yeah. You know, it's exciting and you know, it's starting to become more real, I think, than it has been in a long time. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So that is definitely top of mind for our customers. The other piece that I found, you know, really compelling yesterday is if you were to walk around the expo area for the construction cloud spaces, a lot of people were interested in the model coordination and design collaboration piece. And I think it just further validates how the pre-construction and planning phases of those models, you know, we're seeing a lot more IPD products in the industry. People are trying to have more data integrity with their 3D models. It just shows that we are at this really profound moment in construction where, you know, these VDC departments are definitely getting the resources they need because those downstream effects of having a leaner VDC operation to be more proactive can absolutely help out their business needs. I, I just couldn't just stop watching people flood that area and learn a little bit more from experts like Greg Lowe on our team. Yeah, it's so, really cool seeing yeah. that too because I, I think we've had this great shift in the, the technology being so much more accessible and, you know, for a very long time, the VDC teams are the only ones that were leveraging any innovative tech. And I, I totally. feel like that's, that narrative has shifted dramatically in recent years where everybody has a chance to touch these tools and there's actually great value in everybody becoming a, a bit more of a construction technologist because the, the access to this information and the data and the dashboarding and everything we have right now, I think it, uh, it empowers us to make better choices and decisions, but right. it also allows teams who are still struggling sometimes with resourcing to empower folks to do a little bit more with a little bit less, or at least take less time to do those things so they can hopefully go home at 5.30 instead of seven, or you know, many, right. uh, many of the other challenges our, our construction friends are struggling with still today. Justin, I'd be interested to hear uh, what you're seeing as well. What are y'all fired off of about? Course, of course, AI, of course, won't spend any time on that. I've, I've had a lot of customer meetings, executive briefings, uh, where I get to hear my customers' pain points, their challenges, but then also their goals, how they're using our tools today and how we can help them to enhance any of their uh, processes currently. Uh, but also last night I attended a subcontractor, electrical subcontractor happy hour that was really focused on connecting uh, multiple electrical subcontractors where they got to hear each other's processes. Uh, there was a really robust conversation that was out of my 
out of my league for sure about <laughs> assets and asset management and how they're facilitating that process in ACC. So really excited. I, I love that too. And it really dials in on the, the community part of, of Autodesk University mm -hmm. as well, where you get to bring all these like-minded individuals together and, and have those conversations and really learn from each other. And, and I say this all the time, people are really tired of it. I need an extra swear jar on my desk, but <laughs> you know, the, the willingness for folks to share in the AC industry to help bring and move these these narratives forward and help folks understand where the value add with technology is and how to you know just have this continuous improvement mindset. I love it. It's one of the reasons why I think we're able to be successful at Digital Builder because yeah. folks are also willing to come up here and, and share their perspective. It's just like you know both of you, you're you know both construction professionals. You've been in the industry for over a decade at this point now. You know, and uh, and I appreciate just you know being able to continue hearing these perspectives and pushing the industry forward. So it's a uh, it's a fun moment right now. But Ross, I'd I'd like to hear a little bit more from you. I know you're you're getting all this insight, and we're talking about this community here. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit more? about what you're doing with all of the information that you're gathering. I know it's great to connect with your, your customers and peers and hear from other leaders, but what, uh, what are you doing after AU? What happens next? Yeah, I mean, first of all, there are a lot of customers we haven't even talked to before that came this year, right? And so we're being proactive and working with them, but also we're absorbing kind of the trends that we're seeing this year. What are, what are top of minds for some of these business leaders? And then going back and, and trying to solution for these people, what we think the best outcome they're trying to, to drive is, right? Um, you know, going to this executive happy hour last night, a big trend was about, um, you know, data portability. So going back to kind of the BDC thing I was talking about earlier, but downstream into construction to create what would ultimately be a really clean turnover package, right? And how what they want to do is create trust and better relationships with their owners. You know, it's all about creating a better relationship with owners and the architects want that, engineers want that, contractors want it, subs want it, right? Because that means retention of work, that means, you know, continued business. And I think that is really a, a compelling part of this year is people wanting to, to, to have better data that they can use downstream into operations and facilities. So that's certainly a theme that we're seeing, but we're, what, what we're trying to do uh, as TSEs is absorb that and then do what's best for them when we meet with them after AU. You know, it's it's so exciting to see this meaningful focus on on data. And I, I, I talk about this a lot too. There, I have empathy for folks who are struggling a little bit because it's, mm -hmm. it's a big piece of the puzzle to, to put together if you haven't put this data strategy together already. But yeah. I, I'd be curious if your, your perspective mirrors mine on this one. The conversations we're hearing and having with customers and non-customers on the data topic compared to today, it's, People are asking much more focused and progressive questions, I think, as far yeah. as what they should be doing. Early on, it was a lot of just, just think about this, be deliberate with your data. And now I think the, the corner is being turned right now where folks are going, this is what I want to do with my data. Mm -hmm. And that shift is so meaningful because it means that you're capturing data with intent, but you're also thinking bigger picture about what the potential is. And so like you've got a new project that influences how you write your RFPs, that influences how you work with your contractors. And there's just so much there as you kind of build that, that feedback loop. So I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that you're hearing that too, or at least yep. feel that similar sentiment. So Justin, I, uh, I'm going to pivot to uh, you know one of our final questions today. And I'm a giant nerd, and I think you guys are at least dancing in that area a little bit with me too. So I, I'm eager to hear your answers, but can you tell me a bit more about your favorite industry trends that you're seeing or you're, you're just you know part of or bullish about and some predictions for what the next five to 10 years might bring for the construction industry? Yeah, of course, AI. I mean, we had the big announcement yesterday, uh, but more importantly, companies or a lot of customers I've been talking to so far this week are really interested in, you know, how is this going to impact my business? How's it going to impact my bottom line? So from a construction perspective, we're really focused on practical usage of AI here at Autodesk. So I'm really excited about that because there's a lot of mundane activities. I think Andrew used some sort of phrase. I know I'm going to mess it up, like clearing up the mud and the muck. He probably said none of that, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, but really just helping out with like the administrative side, user-based uh, management, things of that nature. But then also the second thing I'm really excited about, Odie but a goodie, 
collaboration. Um, I've been working with a lot of GCs who are partnering with owners recently, and the owners are really spearheading the collaboration in a cloud-based platform like Autodesk Construction Cloud, where they are getting all of their um, you know, reoccurring stakeholders in a room, and they're pushing the envelope on how they collaborate, not only on the single project that they might be working on at the time, but it, for the future, for future projects, how do they more efficiently collaborate? What is that handover process? What do they do with the data like you were talking about? So that's been really interesting. I'm excited to see where that goes because I know a lot of that messaging we had back in the early ACC days or the BIM 360 days about you know that one project and the big kumbaya in the construction yeah. industry is starting to take fruition a little bit, so it's exciting to see. I'm fired up about that because the owners have such an opportunity if they are getting a bit deeper in the weeds with the construction technology choices that they're hoping their contractors make or what their long-term vision for what they're going to do with that data is. And I feel, the, especially the serial builders, the ones that are out there building over and over and over again and have just a ton of facilities, they're starting to think through things like digital twins and more mm -hmm. futuristic technology. And if you think through that more deeply in the RFP stage, what you get at the end of construction and that handover and everything that we were just talking about, it's so much different and it aligns with exactly what they want to do. And I just, I'm yeah. so bullish on that. And I, I, I keep poking that forward and saying like, owners, oh, like, what are you putting in your RFP? If you just say, we want a construction technology, like that's, that's not enough. Like you, you need to build that relationship with the GC if you don't know what the options are and, and inform that RFP a little bit more. Or if you already have some opinions, make sure they're very clear. So you have an apples to apples RFP to, uh, or you know, proposal to respond to when he puts them out to bid. So there's a lot there and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So Ross, yeah. what about you? What, uh, what trends are you fired up about and what do you think is going to come in the next 10 years? I know I've asked this question to you before. Yeah. I'm curious if it's changed. I, you know, it's changed a little bit. I think um, what we we're seeing um, is that people are really hoping to be lean with their companies, right? You know, there there is this appetite for an industrialization of construction. You know, similar to how manufacturing is work. I know Andrew's mentioned that multiple times. Um, it, it is really true. Like, you know, we are at a capacity problem in the industry. Seems like that's not going away. So we need to do more with less. Um, so everyone is trying to understand. You know, on the theme of data, like how do we actually you know, capture that data to make sure that we are running our businesses as, as, as lean as possible. So that's like one thing that I'm noticing, of course, you know, I, I, the AI thing is very, very um, compelling, right? Like what we can do to be lean, uh, you know, with uh, intelligent search and some of the auto specs that, that, that we've released in the construction cloud, like those are things that, you know, will really drastically improve people's day-to-day -day lives, you know, save a lot of time, um, you know, looking at trends, I'm really excited, you know, over here is the XR workshop. They just released that this past week. Um, the hardware is finally there. You know, we can leverage XR in our workflows, whether it be in design, pre-construction, even in construction. And I'm looking forward to seeing like, how these different hardware devices actually help optimize the industry go going forward. Um, so that's really exciting as well. And that, you know, compounded with AI and all the other releases that we're coming out with, I think we're going to set ourselves up for massive success in the next five or ten years. So, yeah, the, we're, yeah, we're definitely at that inflection point. We had this, you know, yeah. forced digitization in the last few years for all the reasons that we don't need to talk about today. But yeah. you know, we've we've had this kind of hockey stick change, and we have the foundation now, and it's really right. exciting. And, and to your point, which is very astute, the hardware is there now, where folks sometimes were struggling a bit with that. And and I right. always like to point out, if you tested VR or AR or any hardware in this capacity five years ago, or even two or three years yeah. ago, and you had a bad taste in your mouth, or you go, I don't see the value of this, or this doesn't work, you, do, you have to do yourself a favor, and the next time somebody has a new piece of hardware in front of you, check it out, because the, the capabilities are there, and it's, it's just, it's a different conversation and it, it has a lot of value for our teams, I think. So I appreciate you bringing that up because yeah. there's there's a lot to uh, to unpack and I think there's a lot to be excited about. And, yeah. you know, uh, we always see that that silly McKinsey uh, graphic, you know, that came out, what, 10 years ago or something that says construction isn't innovative and productive. And that is just categorically not true anymore. We have this just uptick and it's, right. it's an exciting moment. Yeah. And I think, you know, just going on to that point, 
I was talking to someone yesterday who was a utility owner, and this is a random fact, but what do you think is the highest growth capital projects project type in the country today? I'm not sure, to be honest, off the top of my head. Data centers. That makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. right? Because like everyone is trying to own their data. Big data is obviously a common theme, but AI is really accelerating that as well. Um, and you know, some of these utility owners are thinking about like, oh, how do they get the utility infrastructure to these data centers in some of these remote locations? And so I thought that was so interesting. You know, it's anyway, a, it's random a fact shift. I just had to bring up. I like it. It just shows that. And it just yeah. tracks exactly to what we're seeing right now with the tech. Totally. You know, you have to have that backend support too. And um, so I guess if you're a contractor looking to pivot out there right now, right. looking for, uh, <laughs> for, for new business lines, like check out the, the data centers. Yeah. There's, there's likely going to be some runway there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got one final question. Ross, you've answered this one. So I'm going to kick it to Justin first and then we'll see what you come up with. But Justin, what is one tool that you'll always use on any project, no matter what you're working on? Well, my first love in construction technology is ACC, uh, but my second love is reality capture. Like so it. I would say a terrestrial scanner. I, I love, I was actually talking to somebody, uh, an owner yesterday, and they were telling me about how they uh, scanned 8,000 scans and registered them in eight weeks. And that like is mind boggling, because <laughs> I used to do that back in the day, and about 500 scans would take me probably two weeks, maybe three weeks. So wow. 8,000 in eight weeks is like out of control. The it's technology wild. is out of control. So Gone are the days where you set your stuff up in the middle of the space and push the button, then run away and come <laughs> back in like six hours. You know, like you, you, if you're walking around the expo, you see people with stuff they wear, like the spot dogs going around. It's it's scaled so dramatically. And people are doing it with laser scanning photography. Like it's, it's all over the map. So that's great, you yeah. know? And just having that level of accuracy as well is, uh, is incredibly compelling. I mean, you can do laser scanning now with a, or LiDAR scanning, I think, with a iPhone. Yeah, and granted, the, uh, the accuracy isn't down to the detail you might need for some really you know, heavy uh, finished work or anything, but it's just wild that that's available and is fairly accurate these yeah, days. Yeah. That's cool. I like that answer. Ross, how about you? Uh, you got a new answer for me, or where are we going today? It's the same answer, and I'm going to get a lot of crap from this from Justin, I'm pretty sure, but um, <laughs> it's still measuring tape. You know, Coming from architecture, it's all about the mentality, measure twice, cut once. Um, and you really just can't go wrong with measuring tape just in the field. That's so, fair. I, yeah. I can go wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We, uh, we have a little bit of contention here yep. in our, uh, our tool answers, but you know, that's, uh, that's where I always have the fun. Ross, if you remember, I have a, a tape measure in almost every room in my house, yeah. partly because I lose them constantly. <laughs> so it's, it's good to have backups. Hard to keep yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I have my grandfather's tape measure um, yeah. that it doesn't have a lock on it or anything, and it's all metal, like the encasing, everything. And it, you could throw it at somebody, it wouldn't be a a nice thing to do because it's so heavy. Things um, were built different back then. It know. was, you know, the the throwaway <laughs> ones. I think I've tossed yeah. two or three new plastic tape measures out in the last few years because yeah. they just come apart, which is a scary moment because they just kind of go kaboom. Uh, but I love that answer. Well, gentlemen, thank you again for joining me today. I know you've got a busy schedule here. It is day three at Autodesk University. The expo is going to close here in about two hours. I am tired, but I am excited. And you might notice I'm by myself right now, and that's not because I no longer have any friends. I have plenty of those kicking around, but I am here doing a final recap of a lot of the excitement of what we've seen over the last three days. And I know it's not quite wrapped up. I've got another episode I'm going to be recording in about an hour, but I just wanted to give everybody a bit of a recap about, you know, what I've heard as far as talking to nearly 30 folks over the course of these three days, but also a lot of the big announcements and just broader themes that we're seeing from customers and attendees and partners and everybody else that's been hanging out here in Las Vegas with us this week. So if you can bear with me for you know another episode of a bit of a gravelly voice, I promise I wasn't gargling rocks when I got here, but I have been talking a lot more than I normally do. So beyond that, of course, I've been yammering on and on and on about the excitement of AU. And even if I sound a little quieter than I did earlier, that excitement hasn't gone away. You know. I, I have a real privilege here to talk to so many folks and hear their experience and understand you know, what they're excited about, what they're concerned about, and how we can just do better as a construction industry. And I'm so thankful for that. And you know, hanging out in the expo hall specifically means that we are surrounded by technology and so many different and cool things from all the industries that Autodesk serves. And, and I want to remind you again, you know, 
Autodesk isn't only about the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. We also serve media and entertainment. We also serve manufacturing. There are so many different aspects of our industry. There are broader industries we cover, and they all converge here at Autodesk University. And so it's a really unique opportunity to join and learn from folks that may not come from the exact same walk of life as you have, but there's still a lot of cool lessons to learn and a lot of cool things that can happen. So if you are not able to attend, you should come next year. It's worth your time. And I think uh, you'll come out of the experience feeling pretty fired up about you know the future and potential. But beyond that, it's it's also a conversation about community. I mean, the Autodesk community and the, the community of our customers and the folks that we serve as a business, people really get fired up about joining us here at Autodesk University. There are so many wonderful conversations to be had. There's so much to learn. And people really look forward to meeting up and, and learning from their peers. And if you're working for a smaller company or an organization that might not have as robust of a you know technology team or folks that you can lean on, Autodesk University is a really wonderful place to go to find those people, and then they'll become your people. You'll see them every year. I uh, I joked last time I uh, you know was opining about Autodesk University last year. You have to save an extra five or ten minutes to cross the uh, the entire campus, not because there's any blockers, but you're going to run into so many people that you know that you're going to have to stop. You're going to have some good conversations and you know connect. And so, in addition to that, and this recap here in the last two episodes we pushed this week, make sure you check out our recaps from uh, Ariel Castillo. He's the innovation director at Milla Davis Company. And he's been hanging out with our social media team, doing a lot of really cool daily recaps and just really showing the excitement and electric energy that we have at Autodesk University. So if you want a little bit of a closer look beyond, you know, just hanging out and staring at me sitting in this really incredible booth we have, uh, checking out those videos on the Autodesk Construction Cloud YouTube channel or our social pages is a really fantastic place to go. Or outside of that, the, uh, the digital Builder blog, which is constructionblog.autodesk.com. Other themes that I continue to hear and I've heard in the past, but I think are starting to show up a little bit more frequently, is that importance of design and make companies continuing to digitize and just the, the value add that this industry brings to the broader world. I mentioned a minute ago how many industries Autodesk is fortunate enough to support and touch. And I think that's going to continue to grow as the needs of our businesses and those that are designing and making for the betterment of our world continue to grow. And as we've moved into the cloud, not, not just Autodesk, but the broader you know, AEC ecosystem and abroad, there, there is real opportunity as we find ways to streamline our workflows and bring that communication intentionally into the cloud. And so I think that that convergence also extends to learning from all of those other industries that are hanging out here at Autodesk University. I think uh, you've all heard me talk about the convergence of manufacturing and design. I know a lot of our executives do. It's a conversation I've had with Jim Lynch. It uh, came up when I met with Andrew Adignost last year. If you didn't listen to that episode, you should go back. We re-released it a couple days ago. And uh, his perspective on, on construction more specifically is, uh, is definitely worth checking out. Beyond that, another big theme that I think came up on almost every single episode that we hosted this year, artificial intelligence. We cannot go a minute without mentioning AI within the realm of construction. And I think we've stepped far beyond the, the realm of hype and we're talking about you know real technology here. And I also want to point out, so Construction IQ has been part of Autodesk for five years now, and a lot of real uh, customers have been realizing the impacts of that tool in AI more broadly. But with the announcement of Autodesk AI on Monday and the continuing driver of this technology within our you know, platform approach to construction and all of the industries we serve, I think uh, there's a lot to be excited about. And uh, I think we've also stepped beyond the hype. You know, every, every company in the world right now, it feels like from the AI perspective, has pushed out some announcement tied to AI. But I think that, especially in the realm of construction, those announcements are starting to have a whole lot more meaning. And I'm very excited for what's going to be coming with AI with Autodesk in the coming year. Outside of that, of course, we're always trying to manage risk and, you know, not just the risk of the industry itself, but thinking through the implications of the tools that we use. So AI and machine learning and everything really do extend to their but that also steps into the world of data and the ever importance of having clean data, keeping your data in the cloud, and really deliberately managing that data in a way that allows you to use tools like artificial intelligence and machine learning. As, uh, as I learned earlier this week, uh, talking to Tanya Custis, 
you know, AI really comes back down to math and so does machine learning. And the garbage in, garbage out model is ever important. And so ensuring that you're standardizing your data and you're capturing it in a way with intent I think really is going to have big impacts for our businesses. It is today, it has in the recent past, but I think that's going to continue to increase in the coming years. So uh, making sure we take stock of you know where we are in our digital transformation, our digitization journey, and, and moving that forward, because that helps us make more impactful decisions as we continue moving forward in our industry, in our journey with these digital tools. And and I think an, another nuance that I, uh, I heard earlier this week that I have to attribute to uh, Jitki Chin from Suffolk even though I didn't talk to her this week, her, uh, her message really resonated in that Nick Hall from Deloitte came out and he shared this, that the data shouldn't necessarily replace the experience in making those choices. But what the data does do is it augments our ability to have more certainty in those choices and it validates things and it also gives us more visibility to where we should be asking questions. And so getting our field teams to be in a position to be empowered to make those choices, especially those you know old salts who have been in the industry for 30 years, 40 years, and are looking for a little bit more certainty as they make more and more impactful choices in the field. Uh, I think data really plays a role, but I think the, the ever-growing importance of, of decision-making is becoming more and more apparent across the construction industry. A theme that we unpacked with Sid Hackshar a few, uh, some weeks ago was tied to the end of RFIs, and he mentioned the importance of pre-construction and thinking about that earlier and earlier to inform our design choices. So having a more impactful feedback loop for all of these industries and making sure that you know folks that have sometimes not had a seat at the table until they're entering that construction phase, having more of an opportunity to validate the uh, the data that we're seeing and all these different technologies and you know maybe our design approach, the the steel, steel detailers of the world, the uh, architectural engineers, the uh, the electrical contractors, all of them have such rich experience on the ability to build and the constructability of what we're proposing and. I think getting them involved earlier on in the pre-construction phase and rethinking some of our delivery methods is going to have an ever-increasing impact as we you know, move forward in this uh, ever-scaling and rapidly evolving industry that we all you know, play a part in. I had the privilege of uh, sitting down with Mark Dyke and talking about mental health, but that's not the only time that, converse, or that topic came up in our conversation. It really is becoming apparent that we have to take better care of our people and we have to build the, uh, the models and the infrastructure and make sure that the communication with our teams is there to show them that they're supported and the resources are available if they are having challenges or struggles. We have to take care of our people and we have to make sure that this industry is appealing and lucrative for folks that are working in it. And mental health is a big part of our health care and there's, there's a responsibility of everyone here to, uh, to play a part. So. Keep that in mind as you continue looking at how our industries are going to evolve. Beyond that, of course, everybody's talking about recruiting, talent shortages, the influence of Gen Z as they continue to step further into the construction industry and take the reins. I'm really encouraged by what I'm seeing here, but we have a lot of work to do to ensure that our due diligence is locked up to, to make this an inclusive and inviting industry for folks to join it, especially as you know all those old salts that I was talking about earlier are starting to move closer and closer to retirement. Outside of that, I think it's, uh, it's really even more apparent that you know, these folks are partners, the technology providers, the partners across the industry, the industry associations, all the contractors, whether you're a general contractor or a specialty contractor. This is a broader partnership. This narrative needs to continue moving forward, and we all have to work together to ensure that we're making the right changes and right choices for the broader impact of construction. Uh, John Fish said it very astutely when I interviewed him some months ago on Digital Builder. This is not the responsibility of one company or one organization to make these changes for construction. It's the responsibility of everybody and everybody plays a part. And I just want to make sure we all remember that. But I think the final thought that I'll leave you on today is uh, digital transformation is clearly not a buzzword. I think everybody hears that thrown around and we all waved our hands a bit, especially you know before the, the struggle started in 2020 with how we deliver and approach work, and the uncertainty that came from that with our supply chains and everything else. But if you're not meaningfully moving forward in your digital journey, you're going to be left behind sooner than you might anticipate. And so it's, it's a real onus to uh, you know, just really think through what happens next. And the final thing, I've, I've been asked this question off the cuff, but I've never actually 
thought about it more deeply and I took some time to do this this morning. And so I ask every single guest, what is one tool that they're going to bring to the table regardless of what project that they're working on? And you know, I, I hemmed and hawed and some people say physical tools, some say more you know, broad tools like you know, determination or listening skills or you know, other things like that. And I've decided you know, my one tool is actually my sense of humor because I use it very deliberately across all of the projects that I use on. One, I just like having fun. I can't help, I can't help but be myself. So I'm always goofing off a little bit to the best of uh, you know, my ability and whatever is appropriate and professional in that moment. But using humor is, is a tool for me to ensure that folks that I bring on the show feel comfortable. It also ensures that the folks that I'm collaborating with, whether it's on my internal team or external to this, also understand that, you know, we're all here to have fun. We're all working through all very similar challenges and everybody has best intentions. But, you know, whenever I can uh, add a little bit of humor to a conversation, uh, it's, it's safe to say that I'm probably going to do that. And uh, for everybody who has been listening for the last three years, you know, we launched right before Autodesk University three years ago, actually. I think it was early October. I just want to thank you all for listening as this program has evolved. It's, it's been a real pleasure and a privilege to meet with all the different guests. And I know a lot of them listen to Digital Builder today. And, and I'm thankful for the you know, opportunities and the knowledge that all of these folks have been willing to share with me over the three years that we've had Digital Builder. You know, we're marching closer and closer to 100 episodes, and I'm, I'm so excited to, to hit that milestone. But it's, it's really shown me that folks do care about the work that we're doing here at Autodesk, and I think uh, everybody has a, a part to play in, in moving that narrative forward. So thank you for listening. If you've been out there, if you're a, a new listener, there's a lot of backlog for you to check out. Uh, I don't know if I'd start with episode one since I was pretty new to this journey, and the way I approach Digital Builder is a little bit different than it was then. But either way, I, I want to send a big heartfelt thank you to both our guests and our listeners over the last three years. I appreciate each and every one of you very much. And uh, on that final note, goodbye. <laughs>